So many people want to invest. If you read articles giving financial advice and stories of hotshot billionaires as rise to riches and tips on how to accumulate wealth, you'll find that the core of these success stories is an unwavering devotion to the philosophies of investing. I read countless of life lesson articles, particularly for young professionals, and I can guarantee without hesitation that they will tell you to save and invest as much of your income as possible. So why are so many of our young professional counterparts making it rain buying expensive designer clothes and fancy sneakers and popping bottles in clubs, yet have no investment portfolios? I've seen people drop serious stacks on cool sneakers, yet they don't even exercise. Anybody that knows me knows that my philosophy in life is get one thing right. Get a lot of things wrong, but at the very least, get one thing right. And if there's one thing you ought to get right, it is developing an unwavering devotion to the philosophies of investing. Investing is not complicated at all. In fact, there are three fundamental aspects that you need to know. Only three. Write these three words down, and if you're like me and easily forget, make them big and bold so that you'll never miss them. Assets, risk, and value. Assets, risk, and value. That's all there is. Repeat these three words over and over until they're engraved in your memory because you'll never be able to dominate financial markets if your mindset is not focused on assets, risk, and value. It might seem silly repeating these three words over and over again, but you know what's really silly? Is having no investments, yet you're able to pop an expensive bottle of champagne or whiskey in a nightclub that cost the same as the minimum lump sum required for a passive investment like an exchange traded fund or a unit trust. The first aspect that you need to know and understand better than social media and hashtags is assets. Assets are resources that you own that produce streams of income or have the propensity to be worth more over time. An example of an asset is a share in a listed company where if you're a shareholder, you can earn income through the distribution of dividends. And as the shares grow in demand, they worth what's known as capital gains also grows. Another example of an asset is property, where you can earn rental income by leasing it out to tenants. And if the property is in a well sought after area with great amenities, its worth also grows over time. So anything that you buy that either produces streams of income or has the propensity to be worth more over time is an asset. And wealth is an accumulation of assets. When Forbes publishes their list of wealthiest individuals on the planet, they base that list solely on those individuals' net asset value. In other words, if you add up all their assets, subtract their liabilities, which are their debt obligations, then what you're left with is a true measure of wealth, not their salaries and bonuses. Think about Warren Buffett. He earns a salary of about $470,000 per year, but his net worth is $76 billion. If you do the math, wealth creation is a no-brainer. Stop splurging on expensive basketball sneakers if you have no intentions of playing in the NBA, Pay off as much of your debt obligations as possible and start accumulating more assets. Assets are not limited to shares and property. And your job as an investor is to allocate your resources across different kinds of assets based on your objectives. This is what's known as asset allocation and it's a key form of diversification which is critical in the management of risk. Risk is the second thing that you need to know and understand very, very well when it comes to investments. Whenever we invest, we have an expectation that our assets will yield a positive result. This result that we have an expectation of is what investors call a return. And the definition of risk is simply the chance that the actual return will differ from our expected return. Risk is not necessarily a good or a bad thing, even though society has tattooed it with a negative connotation. Mathematically, risk can be thought of as standard deviation, which measures volatility or the variance of a set of data from the average. In other words, the more uncertain something is, the more risky it is. Risk is critically important because it forces us to think about two crucially significant wisdoms. Number one, 
is having a clear expectation of the future. Have clear goals for your finances and understand the assets that generate the kind of income or yield the kind of growth required for you to get there. Only dead fish go with the flow. The clearer your goals and the more defined the action steps you're taking to get there, the more realistic your expectations become. Wisdom number two is this. If you want a rainbow, you have to be willing to put up with the rain. Buying an asset is like getting into a relationship. There will be days where your partner drives you up the wall. Chris Rock says he'll never hit a woman, but if she drives him crazy, he'll shake her on some, what's wrong with you woman? There will be days where you wanna shake your asset. But as long as the days where you are smiling far outweigh the days where you're frowning, then you're good. At the same time, when things are going really south, you need to know where to draw the line, cut your losses, and move on to the next asset. This is an important wisdom because it faces us front and center with our personal psychology, where we make it clear up front the rain we're willing to put up with and where we draw the line. Whether it's trading stop losses, diversifying our portfolios, or reinvesting our returns to benefit from the compounding effect of investments, upside risk can be managed and downside risk can be mitigated with the right strategies. The third aspect which is core to every investment decision is value. Every asset that you buy has economic utility. In other words, it has features and advantages that benefit those in ownership of it. Value in investment terms is the financial or monetary representation of that economic utility. When you buy a share in a listed company, you become part owner of that company. Now, that company exists to produce products and services that people are willing to pay for. When that company grows by reaching new markets or extending its offering, then the share that you own also grows in value. It's extremely important to understand the value of each asset, and more importantly, the drivers and levers that create value so you can make the right investment calls. When it comes to understanding and determining value, there are two things that you need to consider. One is time. How much time do you have? It's an interesting question to consider. Stephen Wright once said, everywhere is walking distance if you have the time. Whenever we buy an asset, we have an expectation that it will be worth more over time. In other words, investors only buy assets when they've determined that the future value is worth more than the present value. Then they determine how long it will take to get there and decide if they're willing to walk the distance. That's why fund managers and investment bankers spend quite a bit of time analyzing various sectors of various markets because the markets, annual reports, and financial data all tell a story not only of how value is created, but how long it takes for that value to be realized. So as an investor, you're not making snap decisions based on fads, but you're buying assets based on your understanding of how value is created, the drivers of future value, and how long you need to hold that asset for the value to be realized. The second thing that you need to consider is price. Price is what you pay for the asset today. Value is what the asset pays you in the future. Now, just because something is cheap doesn't mean you need to buy it. And at the same time, just because something is expensive doesn't mean it's of great quality or economic value. The trick is to find quality assets that have the propensity to be worth more over time but are sold at a discount. That's the sweet spot. Because worst case scenario, the growth you anticipated isn't materialized, but your losses are minimalized because you bought quality at a discount, giving yourself what the likes of Warren Buffett and Benjamin uh, Graham call a margin of safety. And best case scenario, your assets generate strong streams of income where the actual return matches or exceeds their expected return and the future value looks brighter than ever. Once you have a strong understanding of assets, risk and value, then you're well on your way in developing an unwavering devotion to the philosophies of investing which are key to wealth creation. 
And once you have a strong understanding of these three aspects, assets, risk, and value, then you can tell all those people on that Forbes list not to get too comfortable because you're coming up and it's gonna be a movie.